I mean, as a kid, immediately hooked. As an adult, it's a nice reminder that we're here to have fun. Meh. Watch out, duck. Also, I have no idea what's happening, but I'm 100% here for it. Honestly, a minute and a half production logo is exactly how this movie should start, given the number of insane yet perfect decisions, including wasting no time on this push in on the city. Tell me that boat isn't going 90 miles per hour. The EMH is in this movie? Why do I immediately know he's a bad guy? And yes, I just ignored Saruman for the Voyager Doctor. Called it, slick trash avoidance for your wingtips. Look, this is more time than I generally spend on opening credits, but it's just a nice reminder that whatever you think about the state of Disney, Kathleen has been around from the beginning. Chinatown Center, where business gets oriented. Perfect facial reaction to a racist joke. <laughs> if you paid attention to the first film, you should know where this is going, and you should be so excited you can barely contain it. I'm sorry that didn't work out, sir. Did you hear that cough? He's an antique. We can wait. I do appreciate that while Forrester is a bad guy, he's not like evil. He's not gonna steal it from Mr. Wing or kill him, he's just gonna let nature do its thing. Honestly, that's an impressive logo. It's a C for his name and it's also a clamp squeezing the world. <laughs> Very on point, clamps would be proud. But this isn't a Disney movie, so why is it acting like a Disney movie? Gizmo loses his papa in under 10 minutes? And it's much more Gizmo focused than the first one and I'm not mad at it. He's adorable and I still want him. Dude loves his racist slogan so much he threw it on a billboard. Wow, Mr. Futterman must really be getting better if he can travel. Well, his wife says he is getting better. He was just kind of rattled. I guess having a bunch of little monsters drive a snowplow through your living room could kind of do that to you. Nothing like some quick exposition explaining why the couple that was almost certainly dead in the first movie aren't. A little gremlin tractor crushing never stopped an American made man. You know, I didn't think much about the Burger King in the first movie, but now, turns out I can own Gizmo. Please be careful in stepping in and out and have a powerful day. The automated voice in the building has some of my favorite lines in this film. Hmm, the name, the book cover, so familiar. Honestly, nice to see a character continuing with a passion of theirs. Maybe everybody here would like to do some little touches. The ashtray that reads, rest your butt here. Solid establishment that he sucks and also should maybe go into novelty item development? I don't even smoke and I want that ashtray. Then I guess I shouldn't pick up smoking. Comedy legend Henry Gibson starring in the first of several cameos in this film. Clean out the desk, one hour. Alert personnel, we have a career opportunity in level seven. Ah, corporate America. It's cold and heartless, but... No, that's it. Absolute classic pun. Really giving Dexter a run for his money. Chavez! It always comes back to clear and present danger. Oh, Dr. Catheter, this just came for you. Oh, splendid. There's so much going on. SNL legend Julia Sweeney and they named Count Dooku Dr. Catheter. Casper, I have this tissue analyzed. Charles S. Haas, you write it, you get to be in it. <laughs> Apparently this was supposed to be Dancing With Myself, but Billy Idol turned it down because he hates fun. Fortunately, we love fun and Gizmo's moves are always a win. Not so fast. He knows he's cute, might as well use it as a distraction. Honey, my light went out. You sat still for too long. The building thinks that you left. It's saving energy. Jump around. Smart buildings with motion sensor lights? This movie was way ahead of its time. Spider gremlin shadowing. Aw, oh, Gizmo's so happy to see Billy. Did you miss me? Hey, pal. I sure hope you wash those hands. Yep, really nailing the intrusiveness of smart devices. What is this? Is this a little black armband? Is that what happened to the old man that used to take care of you? Gizmo wearing a black armband to mourn his friend is a level of cute I was not prepared for. <laughs> Gizmo just said Mr. Wing's actor's name, Key Luke. <laughs> Why do I ever trust these idiotic humans? I know I haven't been down here before, but that's gonna change. I'm gonna be more uh, hands-on with these operations from now on. Billionaires, they're just like us, except they're insufferable. See, the gremlins are in fact bad guys and chomp on people, etc. And Gizmo knows they're bad, but it's not like he's not mischievous himself. This entire film happens because he doesn't listen to Billy. He doesn't want to get wet, but he does. Oh hey, also amazing ingenuity. Gizmo's here, and that furry thing? Appropriate reaction. Another cameo, John Astin, the original Gomez Adams and real life adoptive father to Samwise Gamgee. Look, no one should judge a book by its cover, but... Those faces just don't scream, I hope to see them ride around in a Barbie car later on. New batch, new Mohawk Mogwai, and we all know he's gonna get up to no good. Oh hell no, entirely inappropriate. Mohawk deserves everything that's coming to him. <laughs> okay look, I love Gizmo, he's adorable, but this guy, this guy cracks me up too. What <laughs> a goober. Will the owner of the car please remove it from the clam parking garage? Your car is old and dirty. <laughs> Car shaming bit just slipping by in the background. The elevator door 
doors have opened. Please leave. Seriously, passive aggressive Siri, love it. This is a favorite Canadian dessert, the chocolate mousse. Can I cut you an antler? Solid restaurant dad joke. Bummer about the blender. I'm not sure it was that funny, but hey, more power to you. Really believing in your routine. Look at him. I mean, he's wired. I feel like after the first movie, this guru would be making it clear to Billy that it's already time for the snow shovel, but good on him for keeping his cool. He does have a pretty hilarious voice and laugh. So the death count has been dropped from the first movie, and now the binging has been toned down too. Ice cream instead of beer. Doesn't seem healthier or safer for kids. What's going on here? Jerry Goldsmith, the film's composer, everyone gets a cameo. It's supposed to be health food. Fun fact, that's a thing adult humans truly believed in the 80s and 90s, that bro-yo was good for you. What's in the bag? Nothing. Let's have a little look at that nothing. Speaking of the 80s and 90s, Rick Dukeman looks familiar to you because he was in every single movie you've ever seen in those decades as effectively this character. Also, good job, Goober. Mimes. Mimes? This one is flipping everybody off. What is this movie? Really upped the goo factor for the sequel, which was obviously everyone's favorite part of the first. Spikes? <laughs> The fact that movie theaters didn't caption all of the gremlins is really a travesty. You miss so much when you don't know what they're saying. <laughs> Cartoon sound effect. Mr. Kitsuji, please, could you get back in line? Ling from Mulan, yes. But Gede Watanabe also played six different small characters in Blue Eye Samurai, a show I totally have a 30 minute video all about. Some people use a dash. I use a lot. My kind of cooking, but also don't bother with a dash, use a BAM! You know, if you want to knock it up a notch. Well, no, they eat and then they go into the cocoons. Yeah, well, sure, you're going into a cocoon, you want to have a little something first. But what if one of them eats something at 11 o'clock, but then he gets something stuck in his teeth? I don't... Does this movie hate gremlins? I mean, hate gremlins the movie? They're mocking Billy, obviously, but they're also asking some of the many questions we all had. Maybe they're saying we know the rules are lacking some clarity, but also it's a movie. Movie, chill. Or they're telling us we're idiots for enjoying either of these movies. <laughs> Bold strategy. Let's see if it pays off for them. What if they're eating in an airplane and they cross a time zone? I mean, it's always midnight somewhere. <laughs> nope, they're telling us we're idiots for asking. Fair. Incredible jump scare. Perfectly set up. We haven't seen a full evolved gremlin yet, and just like the first film, they do the unveiling justice. So much slimier, so much uglier, maybe even a little more mischievous? Tuna noodle cheese product chowder surprise. I know it's supposed to sound gross, but who's got the recipe for tuna noodle cheese product chowder surprise? Because I'd house some. See, Goober gets it, and sure, his name probably isn't Goober, but like, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> chef Gremlin's ridiculous sound. His stupid little chef's hat? Is he a nod to the Swedish chef? Either way, I love it, and I keep rewatching it. Mm -hmm. So do they have, like, genetic memory, since they're technically related to all the gremlins from the first movie? Things to think about. Ah, ah, stay here and die. Hands down, one of the best lines in the film. Nope. I mean, practical effects are killer, but no pun necessary. I could be rats, right? That's what I'm afraid it's not. Whatever they are, they have got to respect the chain of command. Perfect look. I always appreciate when someone in a film says something immensely stupid and it's acknowledged. I don't know, is there some kind of like Freudian father thing going on where they all hate Gizmo because he's their dad, but also he is them and they hate themselves? Yeah, that's it. I had better stop! Sound alarm. So do the gremlins think they're fooling her or are they just messing with her? Because either way, it's amazing. <laughs> One of them is just doing a cat sound. Truth is, if gremlins did exist, they'd be multi-millionaires off their TikTok prank account. And that's a little depressing. Always with the outfit change. <laughs> it's great how overjoyed the gremlin is by smashing the coffee pot. We could learn a lot from this. It's the little things, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's the little things. If you're gonna make a gremlins movie, you gotta have at least one gross out scene, and this certainly is gross. <laughs> Solid work. All right, props. No way I let a gremlin slime my mouth. Also, they have an odd relationship with death in that they don't seem to care if they die. <laughs> Today we'll start with our video watch. Just re-released on video is the movie Gremlins, though I really can't imagine why. I'd rather spend two hours having root canal work done. I mean, this would make Deadpool roll his eyes, but for its time, this is about as meta as it gets. Gremlins themed test card. But he's so fluffy. All right, that's it. Mohawk has to die. I hesitate to use the word atavism. You should use the word. Let's make sure more people use it.
Okay, wait, wait, hold on. So I, I was just going to input the word of the week, which I have saved in this, you know its own little file, and the, wor- the word that was in there was atavistic already because the last time this word came up, I thought it was a good word for the week, and I, and I had to go back and look through to figure out what movie it was from, and it's from Night of the Coconut when Patrick Stad was talking about lacrosse. I don't know if this is going to be as funny to anybody else as it is to me, but I, apparently I like this word, and I think you should all use it. I hope you're all using it. Okay, back to the show. We can't let them get away. All they have to do is to eat three or four children, and they'd be the most appalling publicity. Priorities. One to two would be no problemo. Hey, if you own the rights, why not? Still more serious than a bad credit card. We're advising our clients to put everything they've got into canned food and shotguns. I like that even Brainy Gremlin, with the power of intelligence, isn't questioning his existence. He's just better at shenanigans. Do take care not to step on or over any other people. Did the Gremlins murder the masculine smart building guy? <laughs> Gremhelm scream. Feels right. We learned later that Kate was flashed when she was a kid, which is grim, but hopefully the fact that she just scored a screamer with a little pervert brings a little closure for her and us. Fire! The untamed elements. Right now, this building is on fire. Oh, never mind. The male voice is fine and still being a weirdo. Honestly, the fire announcement has no business being this funny. God, this is such a great jab at New York. It might literally be because these people are not extras, and since the back gremlin is keyed in, they're just reacting to Murray, who, regardless of what is actually happening in their eyes, needs to chill out. Brutal, but also that church just got 100% cooler. <laughs> Fun fact, the home video version has the VHS tape get snagged up, which did happen and was devastating if it was your only pirated copy of No Retreat, No Surrender, and then a western with the gremlins in a shootout with John Wayne... Gacy? No, just John Wayne. Honestly, this would've freaked me right out as a kid in theaters, like existential trauma forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And ever. This is worse than the first one. We just show these movies, madam. We don't make them. It's that lady Mrs. Deagle hated in the first one. Do you think the Grimsters can stand up to the Hulkster? It's hard to explain how cool this cameo was in 1990, but it was very cool. Eh, being freaked out is fair given everything going on. best bit in the entire movie. And this is how I found out that Rick Baker, the creature designer, not the birthday boy, believed that one of the most distinguishing features of an attractive lady are well-defined calf muscles. Broken the mold. But I do have some small assault weapons. Love to hear the main theme coming back. It's still untouchable. Electrocuting Christopher Lee to death is pretty metal. Up there with falling onto spiked water wheels, to be honest. Slayer? It's so rare that a film plays anything heavy from an actual metal band, let alone Slayer. They're human beings in this building, real lives. Do you have any idea what kind of lawsuits we're looking at here? The most realistic character in the whole thing. Because of the end of civilization, the clamp cable network now leaves the air. And perfect levels of arrogance to assume the only reason your station would shut down was the end of civilization, a true billionaire. If you pull this off, you could save the city. Developer save city. I like that. Good. You know, Billy's a lot smarter than we give him credit for. Of course gremlins love a Toho flick. And to me, it's clear they're thinking astonishing creature annihilates Batty. Gizmo trying to get swole really is unbearably cute. Yeah, that's a tight escape hatch. Straight up hero ingenuity. What we want is, I think, what everyone wants, civilization. The joke is that he's asking for civilization while we pan across a bunch of wacky gremlins causing havoc, but they're just acting like humans. Go ahead, tell me the difference. Now, was that civilized? No, clearly not. Fun, but in no sense civilized. And I mean, yeah, obviously that too, but I mean, didn't the Joker basically rip this off and the Joker's a human? Point me. <laughs> Goober's back, and they're playing the Gremlins theme, all as well. Nah, nope, I mean, again, the design is fantastic. They really can be almost cute at times, but when they make them scary, they're really scary, and nope, badass good guy. What happened to him? I don't know, I guess they pushed him too far. It's true, Gizmo's seen some sh- This man with his Honey, beard um, and a hat looked just like Abe Lincoln. Honey, I really don't think we've got time for this now, you know? It's official, though, this movie hates Gremlins and us forever watching it. Fair, eh? It's fair. <laughs> Seriously, every moment from this movie is dialed up to 1111 and absolutely no one involved cares how far they go. You could say Gremlins 2 doesn't even care. I, I'd probably say that, but hey, they love singing, no shame. And they've really coordinated this number, so more power to them. Also, there's this whole over-the-top musical theater number happening, but at the same time, some of the Gremlins are still treating it like a cabaret show. It's all hijinks to them regardless. These guys aren't bad. And Murray's really showing some growth in this one. 
And again, death, it just ain't a big deal. Hey, Marla, smoke. Health advice. There's a call in hold in Mr. Clam's office. Is there any way that you can transfer it down here without going up there? This is the moment Billy was kicking himself after the pool last time. You know his dad's inventions were prone to short. Epic ending, killed by one of their own. Brutal way to go out. Uh, spoke too soon on what Giz has seen. Poor little guy. <laughs> Even in death, they love bringing the jokes, which is hat and all. Also, that's Joe Dante's voice. <laughs> Metal exit for the brainy boy. Smart building strikes again, twice. He really is every stupid billionaire rolled into one. Also, the hut 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 of the cops behind him. What's happening? Move, sir. All right, carry on. You might recognize Hank Schrader here doing the most cop thing ever as the SWAT team leader from T2, which checks out since he's the SWAT team leader in this too. It was the glasses, it's always the glasses. She's also got a poison ivy thing going, which be careful there, Marla. Lionel Luther has been known to, oh, what am I talking about? Billionaires are all the same. It's Clamp Corners, where life slows down to a crawl. Oh, it's a satire. Okay, I get it now. This is the Starship Troopers of the economic horror comedy genre. You know what I see? Dolls with suction cups staring out car windows. Does anybody ever talk to you about merchandising? But satire with profit potential. He's a mugroy. He's cute, but I'd throw him into a wood chipper if it meant I got to keep Goober Gremlin. What? No, 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 no. I didn't write that. Gizmo's cuteness is a good reminder that Goober Gremlin is dead, and the world is better off without his stupid face. There, that I wrote. Also, his name was apparently Daffy. I, I think we all agree it's Goober. We'll be with you in a minute. Who's that? See, Kids Cable was this crazy thing where a company would love all the best programming together and you'd just have to watch what was on, whereas now, see, now everything is a la carte and it ends up costing way more. We won. We won, we won everybody. Look, can I say something? See, the doctor gets it. Long, isn't it? You can't beat random credits, Daffy. Patently ridiculous. Yeah, all right, that's enough. Still lurking about? Don't you people have homes? My cool man, we're respecting the crew. The best oh, no, you don't. Sorry. Sixty years of hogging the end title is enough. Ha! <laughs> hogging. <laughs> he won me back. Gremlins 2 is absolutely bananas. And not just in the ways that Key and Peele pointed out. I honestly get why people would hate it. Listening to the director's commentary, they knew what they were doing. They got carte blanche and used it to its fullest potential and completely avoided just redoing Gremlins. And the result is indisputably fun. It's half parody, half mockery, half satire, three halves. And all of the characters just work. They each know what they're doing there from the straight-laced Dr. Catheter all the way to Murray Futterman who got a much bigger part for this one. Also fun aside, Christopher Lee assumed he'd be wearing a funny wig and going over the top, but Don Dante was like, eh, just play it normal, it'll work. Phoebe Cates also had a lot more to do this time as well, and her shining moment is when she gets to make fun of her own over-the-top dead dad story. The real standout to me, though, is John Glover. It seems like they're selling him as the big bad, but he's almost redeemable by the end, mostly due to Glover's likability. And then Howie Mandel also does Gizmo's voice, and that probably doesn't seem all that important at first glance, but it's a different movie without him. Like I said, everything is dialed up, and you can feel that the most in the Gremlins themselves. They held nothing back, and they run the gamut from terrifying to absolutely ridiculous. The reason this scares is so on the money is because, I mean, I think it might have actually happened this way. This movie is fun, scary, and ultra uber self-aware. You can hate on it for being bonkers, but the last thing anyone needs is a gritty, realistic Gremlins movie, and this film is not that. But tell me you can't already picture the spooky reboot trailer with an acoustic, slowed-down version of Taylor Swift's anti-hero as we follow a dark silhouette of a Gremlin out onto the Hollywood sign at night. You can see it. I, I know you can see it. But hey, we'll still have this one. And that's gonna be a wrap for this year. Per usual, I'm gonna take most of January off, if not all of January, and I'll be back in the new year. Thanks for all your support this year. Uh, the people who usually listen to these types of things are my core audience that have been with me for a long time. So it sounds trite, but you make this channel possible, you make this job possible for me, so I appreciate it very much, thank you. So happy holidays, happy new year, and I'll see you soon. Oh! <laughs>